My name is Mary D. Cummings and I will be presenting alongside Mary Hooker. For our presentation, we will be discussing how accelerated learning supports public school system with emphasis uh, on the AQE Liberia activity. This presentation discusses ways that AQE supports the Liberian formal education system, which may be considered for other settings, looking at policy and vision, curriculum and training, community and rehab, monitoring, evaluation and learning, and their contribution to formal education system strengthening in Liberia. The AE policy and vision is aligned to the government goal, which is also stated in the sustainability development goal, as seen on the slide, for free, equitable, and primary and secondary education, leading to effective learning outcomes. Accelerated quality education, a vision of access for out of school. A vision of access for out of school is seen in the goal and the results of the activity. This supports formal education system in Liberia by getting out of school, over age, into school through community outreach, helping them catch up, and most importantly, transitioning into formal school system. A vision of harmonization and provision. The AQE project works with the Ministry of Education to develop test and implement policies for overaged out of school and learner, uh, focusing on access and transition. In 2017, the harmonized policy was signed and launched by the Ministry of Education. And this, this policy brings together ALP, ages 8 to 15, ABE, ages 15 to 35, and other education, 18 plus. And in August of 2018, the learner's eligibility assessment and certification policy guidelines was launched. And this clarifies the different steps to implement the policy in practice in a one school approach for conventional and ELP. All of these policies that we have just discussed are leading towards a unified AE policy. As seen in the diagram, uh, there are different entry levels, so you can use the ALP and enter going through level, levels 1, 2, or 3 and transition into primary school at any level, or you can use the ABE and go to the world of work and prepare yourself, either to go to TVET and beyond. So I will stop now as Mary Hooper continues from there. Thanks, Mary. And thank you for that summary of the unified policies and words like harmonization and uh, transition. We can see that in all of the elements of the AQE, including this one here on curriculum and training, which is harmonized to align with national reform, revision, standards and capacity building. The curriculum development in the AQE, for example, was adapted from the Ministry of Education conventional school curriculum, which in itself is going through a reform process, moving from content to competency-based learning, and also adding effective and psychomotive domains and domains on sexuality education and school health programs. And also, of course, it was adapted from the Ministry of Education accelerated learning program. The standards-based assessments in AQE are aligned to the ministry assessments. So you have placement, formative and summative assessments that is in line with um, pre-tests for school entry and end of period testing, continuous assessment and completion assessments in the formal schools. And professional development is centered on the schools, the public schools, teachers, principals, PTAs, and education officers that are working in the public school system in Liberia. So the professional development focuses on, um, focused on uh, building capacity to implement the AQE curriculum and supervise certification and learner achievement is also working with the same stakeholders who are working in the public school system. In terms of community engagement around access, safe and quality environments, we see something similar. 
harmonized approaches for mobilizing communities for learner enrollment, attendance and completion with important messages on the importance of education for all communities. Um, the pilots that we have been doing around safe learning environments, an event series for 25 pilot schools, will have application and expansion implications for all schools, ALP and conventional. And again, the training of principals, teachers, PTA and education officers is a training in a network response of all stakeholders in the system to be able to support learners in terms of risks around school safety. Here we see the school rehabilitation element that was part of AQE. And this rehabilitation was done in two phases. We can see some pictures of these phases. The rehabilitation of classrooms um, and the rehabilitation of latrines, rehabilitation and also building new latrines. This is to enhance school conditions and enhance safety linked to some of the research that was done in AQE, which identified safety risk factors, not only in the classroom, but also in the school compound, particularly for girl students, and also issues of safety on the way to and from school. Altogether, the monitoring, evaluation and learning in the AQE is strengthening feedback systems for both AQE and conventional schools. Of particular note is the work that AQE did with MOE, MNE colleagues around school quality improvement assessments on ALP provision that involved assessment of standards on teaching and learning environments and community links and the development of a harmonized classroom observation tool which contributes to the Ministry School Quality Assessment Tool for all schools in the country. Here we can see a mapping that came out from the School Quality Improvement Process Baseline in AQE schools, looking at teaching and learning environments uh, in terms of uh, friendly, uh, learner-friendly indicators and safety and the management of the quality of teaching and learning and also the community links involving this community itself, PTAs, uh, teachers, learners, in assessment dialogues with the school authorities around quality, around relevance, and around sustainability. The data that was collected is also contributing towards the database of school quality assessment that is part of the Ministry MS. Here we can see the classroom observation tool that was jointly developed by the AQE and the Ministry of Education colleagues from MNE to assess teacher application of strategies in both ALP and conventional. And again, it yielded some interesting findings and unexpected. Some of them showed up gaps in the conventional school around that came to the attention of the ministry. Our own midterm eval uh, evaluation also identified cross pollination in the ALP classroom practices that fed back into the conventional school practices in the use of the teacher guides, the scripted lesson applications, and the learner workbooks. So, all in all, the out, the, the, a key output of the AQE intervention towards system strengthening is the ministry-led ALP conventional school pilot. This is a pilot that is currently being implemented in the final direct year of implementation in 12 out of the 264 sites. And it is looking at ALP and conventional learners learning during a regular teaching schedule. And what happens when you transfer um, ALP overage learners into um, the conventional classroom? And what happens when teachers are trained in conventional and accelerated learning methodologies? The idea is that the ALP will be sustained after the life of the project at no or little extra cost. But more importantly, and for sustaining and strengthening the system, uh, the focus is on optimization of the ALPCS 
components that we have presented here. Components like the policy, the dissemination and the implementation of the harmonized policy and the learner eligibility guidelines for traditional and non-traditional pathways through the educational system. The curriculum integration and one school approach, not only in AQE sites, but beyond AQE sites to other sites that are offering ALP and conventional school provision. The teaching and learning materials and the distribution of these materials in soft and hard copies on tablets and supplies to ALP programs and beyond. The professional development, which has application for both pre and in service on the use of ALP and conventional school methodologies. The community engagement building PTA capacity to use the pilot safe learning environment strategies, again beyond the ALP schools. And more importantly, the monitoring and evaluation and learning opportunities through tools like the school quality improvement tool developed through ALP to contribute to the National School Quality Assessment Toolkit. Tools like the observation tool on ALP and conventional practice. That is the end of our presentation. We leave you with some questions. And thank you.